Hi everyone, Mark here from Coach Better and welcome to another Top Tips from the World Cup. Today we're going to have a real focus on an individual player. We've talked so far about team concepts or principles within the game, but today we want to try and focus on actually one of the best players in the world, Kian Mbappe. So for coaches who want to integrate individual work into their training, or even players, particularly ones who play in a forward part of the pitch, hopefully this is for you. And where we're going to start is the four key tools that Mbappe uses to make him an effective player. And ultimately, at the moment, he can pull any one of these tools out of his toolbox, but what makes him so effective is not only can he execute them to a high level, but he knows when and where to use them. And this is the key. And what we're going to go through is why he chooses to use one of these four tools at a particular time, and then how he uses it. So... The first thing we're going to talk about is his ability to spin in behind. So that means he's going to identify space in behind the opposition back line and then run in behind them to try and receive the ball. Why is this important? This is important because as we can see in this image, we can see, number one, the player on the ball has got time on the ball. And we can see Mbappe in that space where he normally likes to position himself in a wide area and slightly off a defender. Now, he knows his main objective is to find the fastest route to goal. So the minimum amount of actions to get him in behind. All he's looking for is, is there some evidence that suggests I could run in behind? Now, half of that evidence is there. There's time on the ball. And as we move forward for the clip, just a couple of seconds, or even a split second, we can see the Australian defender next to Griezmann has moved away from that yellow circle. And immediately, Mbappe's scanning and awareness allows him to identify there's now some space in behind. And you can see now, he's off. He's sprinting, ready to sprint, into that space in behind the defensive line. And then the next image is suddenly, he's received the ball behind the defensive line, and France are in a very dangerous situation. Okay, so... What if the defenders make it difficult for him to spin in behind? He's got that tool. He knows now if there's time on the ball and there's space in behind, he can spin. But what if those defenders position themselves well? And you can see they've done that here. So, time on the ball, and we can see Mbappe again highlighted. But this time, those defenders are positioned very, very well. Not only are they nice and compact, but two of them at least are in a position to defend Mbappe to stop him turning but also if he was choose to turn and spin behind they could probably defend that space in behind and this is where Mbappe is so good because the next tool he's got in his locker is his ability to combine with the teammate to create the space and manipulate defenders so now we can see his mentality to combine with Olivier Giroud and bring an Australian defender out of that space to again allow him to get in behind. And we can see now, in that moment where he's played that combination, the Australian defender has moved out of his space, so that line has become jagged and created that space in behind for Mbappe to run into. And he's that good that, boom, you give him that space, he will find a way to get in there, either through a spin or a combination. Now, what if those two options aren't available? The defender defends, defends the spin and they also defend a combination, either through marking opponents around him or maybe he hasn't got a teammate to combine with. Now we can see how clever he is to create space for others. He realises that more and more defenders are being drawn to him, so he tries to move and manipulate them again. So you can see now where he's highlighted. He's defended tightly, not opportunity to sprint in behind, probably not an opportunity to combine with a teammate or get turned. So his awareness now identifies a teammate who he can create space for. So now, by a simple movement towards the ball, he creates some space in behind that defensive line for now a teammate to run into. Finally, his ability to play 1v1. So we can see in this shot now, Mbappe in a wide area. Now, is this luck? Is this judgment? Is this good team play? 
Well, ultimately, he set this situation up. You can see 70 minutes on the clock. He spent a lot of time asking defenders questions. And ultimately, the right back for Australia decided, I give up. I've tried getting tight, you've spun in behind. I've tried getting close enough where I can defend the space in behind, and you've combined with others to still get in behind me. I've tried doing both perfectly, and even marking you and getting covering teammates around, and now you've moved me out of the way to create space for a teammate. So the only option left is to get narrow, get compact, and allow him some space out of wide areas. So at least as a defender, you can say, I can see him, he's in front of me, I can defend that situation. But as we know, Mbappe is that good in these situations now, once he gets faced up, facing the opposition goal, with a positive forward first touch, he can play 1v1. And next thing you know, six seconds later, he's in a position at the byline, brought two defenders towards him, arguably three and four, which allows him the opportunity to deliver a great final ball to allow Olivier Giroud to score France's fourth goal. Overall, incredible player, but utilises those four key weapons. So, how can we develop that in our training? Well, this is a practice that we've developed and we work with one of our partner clubs to highlight how we can think about helping our players in this area. And what we can see here, and we're going to focus on the players in the middle. So, look out for the attacker and their decisions they've got to make. In this example, they've got to scan, they've got to work out where the defender is, and they've got to make some of those decisions we just talked about. Am I going to spin? Am I going to combine with a teammate? Am I going to get turned to play 1v1, like in this example? Or am I going to create space for others? Hopefully an example of some great practices to use and some principles you can adopt with your players. Best of luck for your upcoming sessions.